Okay, folks, welcome to the Week Ahead Commentary for the 20th. Uh, so what you're looking at here is a Slack group that I opened up, and I shared it with members that were on the final countdown half hour at 3.30 today, and most seem to appreciate it as, as, as an alternative to the current forum that we have, which I don't really use. I, you know, I just don't appreciate the functionality, and I don't I don't know if anybody else really appreciates it that much. I'm not seeing much usage out of it, uh, so I'd rather uh, test out different platforms to try to get that com community vibe going. You know, we get it on the live streams, but I'd like to really adopt it to to help everyone uh, be able to communicate one to one, etc and share information charts like the one I just popped in here earlier. This is one of our focus stocks for today, TCP Pipeline. And the way I did this was, for those that have uh, Trend Spider, all I did was I took the snippet, the screenshot, and I popped it in there. And the current form, forum, you can't do that. And it drives me absolutely crazy. I like to share charts. I couldn't do this with the current platform, uh, so I'm really happy. I just tested this out, and it worked. Uh, also, if you want to get some stock information, all you need to do is use a backslash and backslash quote. We spoke about NVIDIA, so we'll use NVDA, and NVIDIA pops up here, so you get some data. So... There is some functionality. All you need to do is backslash, type in quote, and then the symbol. I'll do it again for another symbol. Backslash quote, TCP. And there it is. There's TCP pipeline. So we're watching this one. News about stats, etc. So I'm really liking this. Franklin mentioned that if we added folders, and I sent out a, he DM'd me with the, with the suggestion. I'm open to it. I'm just wondering what people will use it for. I'm just trying to learn. So whatever you have in terms of feedback, what you want. I know some of you are very familiar with this platform, and I don't know what I don't know at this point. I fully admit that. So I'm open to your suggestions, and we'll get them in there. All right, so let's get to the charts. All right, to begin with, the TLT. We spoke about this last night. This is a weekly chart and how last night we were poised for a breakout. Well, one day made a big, big difference. And not only do we break above one resistance level, we closed above another. Very bullish stuff here. So money is moving into bonds. Yields are pressing lower. Daily chart. Clean breakout. Oh, if I didn't mention, sorry for, for, for backtracking on this. I'm going to include a link for Slack in, I'll probably send it out a couple of times, in with the link to this video. So you'll, you'll be able to sign on. And I'll be on over the weekend, so feel free to reach out to me. All right, so TLT. Daily chart closed above its 50-day moving average for the first time since, believe it or not, mid-August. So very bullish price action. The tips, we closed right at the highs of the week. I mean, amazing price action here. I spoke about the tips last night. When I was talking about my bullishness regarding gold, and gold, at least the gold miners popped out up this morning. They faded on the day, uh, but we're beginning to see signs that things are changing here. So tips broke out. Daily time frame, Stokes already extended. Watch for a pullback, but things are changing here. The U.S. dollar. Uh, we held the lows of the week. I think we were up on the day. Yes, we were up on the day. 
We close at the highs of the day, but we are on very, very thin ice here. The VIX, weekly time frame, we closed above support. Stokes are very weak. Daily chart, a bullish reversal bar. The second one in the past three days. They're holding the support level. Let's update it. So the market is telling us it likes the support level. Stokes are hooking up. The Dow Transport's weekly chart. We faded. You know, again, we spoke about this last night that I didn't like the price action. Uh, it, it reminded me of a short covering rally, but volume has not really supported my argument that, that, that it looks as though it's a short covering rally. But be that as it may, what we're seeing here is not good price action. Yes, we closed up nearly one and a quarter percent on the week, but all closes are not made the same, right? Had we closed at the highs of the week, there would have been no bigger bull than me. We didn't. We didn't last week, and we didn't this week. This is the market sending us a signal. Daily chart. We put in a new daily high, but we reversed the close right at the lows of the day. Volume light. You know, these stokes could still hook up and surprise us and move up higher. So I'm not, I'm not going to get all bearish right now. Seasonality is not in our favor. Uh, the technicals longer term are not in our favor. But we need to keep an open mind because we live in precarious times. The Dow Jones weekly chart, bearish key reversal week. Volume to the downside was slightly below average. Daily chart, no new daily low today. I'm recording this on Friday. No new daily low, volume dropped off. So once again, I, I can't get all that bearish here. It's not looking good, but it's not horrific yet. Trends haven't been broken. Support levels haven't been broken. So the path of least resistance remains to the upside. But I hate to keep saying this. You know, we're hanging on by a thread here. The S&P 500 weekly chart, bearish key reversal bar. Unlike the Dow Jones, we did not put in a new weekly high. The Stokes still look very, very good. RSI looking okay. Volume was light. Price action horrible. Man, MACD is so extended here. Daily chart. No new daily low. And inside day, no new daily high either. Stokes are rolling over here. No breakdown, though. We do have a higher high, but no breakdown to new lower lows yet. The small caps, of which we went short of this week, still closed up over 2.25%. Stokes look good, a little bit of a fade, a bit extended relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. You know, this is a, a huge index. You know, for it to be where it is right now, trading above the two for the second consecutive week in, a, in the proximity of the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, I mean, this is not, this is not normal. It's completely abnormal. Daily chart. We closed up on the day, strong. New daily high. Volume rose versus yesterday, uh, but uh, volume was below average. Both days. The banks filled candlestick on a weekly time frame. Very extended relative to the two standard deviation Bollinger Band, and yields are dropping. So that does not bode well for the banks. Stokes still look good. RSI still looks good. But I think they're going to come in. Up volume decline this week. Daily chart. Daily chart. Inside day, no new high, no new low. Uh, it doesn't help that bond yields are declining. For sure. But not horrible price action. Volume light.
the trip cues. A uh, weekly chart, you could argue that we broke down below support. Uh, let's say that we closed at it. But on a, on a daily time frame, it, we had a breakout point failure. And I'm going to caution about one other thing here. Is that I don't use the Stoke RSI for much. But what I do use it for is this type of stuff, this chop. When you get this, it doesn't usually mean good things for the market. And here we are yet again. Weekly RSI still looks very good. Stokes look very good. So we can't rule out a continuation breakout here. But the fly in the ointment is the daily chart. Breakout point failure. I went over this at the 3.30 show. And this is the third time. Once, twice, three times that we have broken out only to break back down again. That hurts confidence. Volume has been very light. Let's take a quick peek at the close. 15 minute view. Not good. Not good at all. So I suspect that if there's any interest, I mean, Mnuchin's backing away from Powell closing down programs, credit programs. I don't know. I don't know what the strategy is on the part of the administration. Are they going to uh, pull away from the markets and let let this market and the Fed manage themselves. I, I'm getting that feeling. I, I, I have to say, I'm getting that feeling. Technology, no breakout this week. Stokes are looking very good. RSI, no breakout. Volume to the downside, extremely light this week, which is bullish, of course. Daily chart, this is not an engulfing day. But uh, it's not a bullish day by any stretch of the imagination. This is a poor day. We closed right at the lows of the day. Volume was light. The semis, we went over this at the 3.30 closing bell show. And the semis are very extended. Uh, an inside week, a little bit of a fade. But the fact that there was no follow through to the downside from last week's price action was bullish. So... This is looking pretty good. We went over chart in NVIDIA. NVIDIA may have had some impact on the SMH. Very extended on MACD. Daily chart. Daily chart. We attempted a breakout today, but we were rejected. We were up when we were talking about it slightly. And then as we started going through the charts, uh, the semis began to weaken up. And ultimately, we closed right at the lows of the day. So not a good close. Note the lower highs and lower lows on Stoke RSI. LABU, uh, Franklin, I know you're out there. Uh, a little bit of a fade from the close, a little bit. This is a weekly chart. We held the breakout, we retested, we held, we rallied off of it, off the lows. Volume did drop off a bit. Daily chart, a good day, a good day. Slight fade, but not much. Outside reversal bar, a bullish key reversal bar. But the volume, weekly and daily volume is a little bit concerning. So watch that $70 per share mark, critical support. But if this market holds up, I think that LABU breaks out. Energy, a very strong week, but we faded. And with yields pulling back, that does not bode well for the economy. We had a crude inventory build earlier in the week. I read a report this morning that the Cushing frackers, they have tremendous amounts of oil in inventory. So I worry about the price of oil and whether or not we can continue this trajectory higher with the lockdowns coming into place. And in addition to that, warm weather. I mean, it was 64 degrees here in New York today. Volume is very good. So we did lighten up on the energy trade daily chart. Bullish reversal bar yesterday, basically a neutral day today on light volume. So there are bids out there. Certainly there are bids out there. The monthly chart. It looks really good. I'm loving the RSI. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not we close strong. If we close above 35, that's very bullish. If we fade, that would be bearish. Volume was very good. It is good so far this month. We still have 10 calendar days to go or so. Oil, weekly chart, an up week of 4% on oil. Why? I don't know. Daily chart, a good day today. Can't knock it. We closed up by over a half percentage point 
Indicators look good. Volume rose. So who am I to argue? We're seeing inventory builds, yet the price of oil is going up higher. You know, sometimes w when the news doesn't match up with price action, that's a tell. So we need to respect the market. The market's always right. And the headlines are, <laughs> depending on what you read, are usually wrong. So we'll stay open-minded. Gold. Weekly chart. We closed down on the week. These stokes have been haunting us, right? They've been keeping us away from gold. Volume dropped off, which is very good to see. And we did hold 1850. Daily chart, very nice. Higher lows RSI. I think these stokes are setting up for a W formation. And we broke out today. Look at this. We broke out. Closed up nearly 11 bucks on the day, over a half percentage point. Volume light. Let's go to positions. The GDXJ weekly chart held the lower band of support. Remember last night we were talking about uh, the Stokes possibly forming a W formation. They did not validate the lower lows on price. They did not put in lower lows this week. RSI did, though. Volume dropped off. So GDXJ down 5% this week, but all down weeks are not created equal. We're seeing some signals in here that don't cause us to become overly bullish, but we're becoming less bearish. And yesterday, in fact, we added more to our position. Daily chart. Right, so this is why we don't chase in the morning, right? They gapped it up in the morning only to fade. Right, ultimately, we did close up over a half percentage point. Good to see. We're going to get some backing and filling here. I think that we're setting up for a nice trade. The Stokes are very oversold. Volume about average today. Remember the dollar weekly time frame, very weak. The dollar and the GDXJ and gold trade inversely of one another. So watch for a dollar break. Silver, no new weekly low this week. Stokes are doing the same thing as they're doing with the GDXJ. We were down on price, but Stokes hooked up. Daily chart, we closed up on the day, a bit of a fade. Stokes are still weak. We're not ready here. They're not as oversold as they are on the GDXJ. I'm more bullish on the GDXJ short term than I am on silver, gold money. Horrible week. But usually it trades along with gold. Gold was down. So we're not going to add here, but we'll, we'll hold on to it. Calmain Foods weekly chart, a down week, 2.5%. Daily chart. Ultimately, we finished down on the day. We were higher, but we faded. Stokes are declining. We need to hold support here. Yeah, we're not. Right, so a bit of a warning flag here on Calmain Foods. I was looking at a 15-minute chart earlier, and the 15-minute chart looks really good. Higher lows, moving up higher. Volume, very good into the close. Uranium weekly chart, a down week. Volume light, daily chart. Nice, strong consolidation here. I think we're going to break out. Volume, very good. So uranium, this could be bought. Stokes declining, but watch for flattening out as we're seeing on RSI. And in fact, RSI is beginning to hook back up. ExxonMobil, I'm glad we, we booked some profits when we did, right? It was the wise thing to do. Volume was good, but the price action was not great. I think we're going to retest one or two of these support levels. Daily chart, yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. 36 bucks a share to $35 per share. You know, when, when yields are pulling back, it's the, the bond market saying, listen, uh, there's not a lot of faith that we have organic growth in the economy. So if that's the case, then why do you need more energy stocks moving up higher? You're not going to find investment there. The, the market wants to see organic growth or stimulative growth vis-a-vis -a, -vis a major, major stimulus bill. But absent that, I think that uh, we've seen the low-hanging fruit get picked on these energy stocks for a short period anyway. The EDC, powerful week this week. Bullish reversal bar, we're up nearly 5%. Volume light, though. Warning flag on the track. Daily chart, very nice. Very, very nice. Held support. Stokes look good. RSI looks good. Volume very light again. BRZU weekly chart up over 5%. A little bit of a fade on the week, as we saw last week as well. 
If oil gives way, expect some weakness on the BRZU. Volume rose. Daily chart. A down day today on the BRZU. Underperforming other emerging markets. And that's with oil up. So that's a concern. So a warning flag on the track for BRZU as well. Rocket Mortgage. Held the 20-period moving average. And it did rally off the lows of the day, to be fair. I'm in no rush to go adding to this. I'm going to stay long of it. But uh, if we start breaking down to new weekly lows, along with the market, then we're going to have to lighten up some. Let's move on to watch stocks. The first chart up is CrowdStrike Holdings. This is a um, cybersecurity play. And other names that popped up on the list was CyberArk, very good company. You can also play Hack, H-A-C-K which is a ETF for the cybersecurity plays. CrowdStrike is looking particularly good in that we have broken out on price, higher lows RSI, and a breakout on RSI. Volume a bit light. Stokes hooking up higher. And we have a breakout. Daily chart. A little bit of a doji formation today. Very close to a breakout. I think on a close above 146 per share. These shares can be nibbled on. But ultimately, we're going to want to wait for a breakout and a close above 153.90. That'll mark a close at new all-time highs. And that's where we want to get a little bit more aggressive on the shares because you have no overhead supply above. Stokes look rock solid. So that's CrowdStrike. The next chart up, Constellation Pharmaceuticals. Weekly chart, a beautiful breakout on the week. Stokes higher lows, RSI higher lows in a breakout. Volume outstanding. Daily chart, we have a breakout. Stokes moving up higher, RSI moving up higher, confirmed breakout, good volume, very pretty chart. I think it goes higher. The next chart up, TCP Pipeline Partners. We haven't spoken about this one in the past. For those who want yield, this yields over 8%. Now, some may not be able to buy this if you tried, especially if you're in, um, in a retirement account looking to buy these shares because it is a master limited partnership. And I believe that you may need to be an accredited investor to take a position. So if you're wondering why you're being rejected, that is probably the why behind it. You probably you need to use a, um, a non-retirement account. We broke out on RSI. Stokes, no breakout yet, but I think we're going to pump up higher here if oil continues up higher. Daily chart, nice breakout today. The first close above the 200-day moving average since here, March of this year. Volume, very good. All right, the Van Eck Vietnam holders. I thought that we would get a, uh, not the holders, it's the Van Eck vectors, sorry, not holders. I thought that we would get a pullback. I've been waiting, and as Larry appropriately pointed out during uh, the final moments today, that uh, I've been waiting there since $14 per share. I think it's actually lower than that. But this week was just simply an outstanding week. I mean, bit major breakout. I thought that we would stall here, backfill, give us the opportunity. Wasn't to be. Uh, very strong Stokes. Daily chart. Very strong day. Up over 2.25%. I mean, there's nothing not to like about this chart. All right, the only caveat I'll place on is that on a two-hour time frame, what was it a four-hour time frame? I think four-hour time frame. We're very extended. So I think on any pullback next week, I'll be a buyer, at least opening up position dollar cost average in. And with that, folks, everybody enjoy the remainder of your weekend. Please check out Slack. Give me your thoughts, feedback. I may set up a channel within Slack to provide that feedback so we can keep it organized. And comment at will. And I'll talk to you soon. Be well.